Hello guys and welcome back to the Summer Day Studios YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at how to create PBR materials in Maya with Arnold. So we've taken a look at how a material works with Maya and Arnold, specifically with the open PBR surface material. We've looked at what the different inputs do, like diffuse for the color, roughness, metalness, and the normal, uh, or the bump. So today we're going to look at how we can plug PBR textures texture files, texture maps into these inputs to create realistic looking materials. So you've probably heard the term PBR floating around uh, on the internet for a while, and you might not necessarily know what that means. So PBR, or which stands for physically based rendering, is essentially just a rendering approach that uses texture maps to mimic how light works in real life to create realistic looking materials. A PBR material is not just a single file, it's a set of texture maps like uh, diffuse for the color, metalness, normal, and roughness that provide surface information and uh, to replicate the physical properties of real world materials. Um, they're pretty much the standard for creating realistic materials in all 3D render engines as far as I know um, for games, film, and TV so it's definitely something that's useful to learn. We're not going to be looking at how to actually create the texture maps in this uh, lesson today um, but what we are going to be doing is looking at how you can set these up in Maya and Arnold if you're a student or hobbyist or just looking to, to sort of like learn a bit more about how PBR works. So I just have a cube here that we're going to use as an example. You are going to need a model with UVs. A default cube will work if you just want to experiment today that already has UVs or if you have a model already in mind, uh, regardless of what it is that you have that you've done UVs for, um, you can use that too. Uh, there's a number of different places you can get PBR materials from for free, including all the maps, diffuse, roughness, metalness, normal, etc. Uh, one of those being Ambient CG. They have a huge library of materials from everything from sand to wood to metals to grass to snow, basically whatever you're interested in. Cake as well, I think. Um, Polyhaven as well is another great one. This one integrates really, really nice with a blender if that's what you're using. And again, they have everything here. You can see the list on, on the left hand side. They've got terrain, floor, brick, wood concrete fabric um these two are both free options although i think you can donate and they have some more premium tier things that you can unlock by i think subscribing um so i'd highly recommend that you check these sites out they're incredibly useful i've been using them for a long time um some more paid versions as well and just by the way we're not sponsored by these guys at all these are just different resources i've used and that you can use um polygon as well uh, a company run by the uh by blender guru or at least started by Blender Guru. They have fantastic materials as well that you can purchase. Uh, these are paid um, as opposed to Polyhaven and Ambient CG, but they're very, very high quality. Um, and the same goes for Quixel Megascans as well. These are really, really, really nice materials. They're, uh, I'm in the UK, so they're about 90 pence each. Um, probably something similar in, in dollars, and, and I'm not sure about the pricing in the rest of the world, but they're relatively cheap for what they are. And yeah, so that's just four different places you can get them from, two free ones and two paid ones. Um, but for today's video, I'm going to be using a specific material from Polyhaven, this wood shutter material. So I'll go ahead and include links for all of these in the description. Um, so if you want to follow along, you can download this specific one. They come in a few different resolutions from 1K up to 8K. I've gone ahead and downloaded the 4K. I would recommend that you download either the 2K or the 4K. Don't worry about the 8K. It's way too big um, for what we're looking at today and, and what most people will be using. Uh, so once you've downloaded that, go ahead and store that in a place that makes sense and open it up. So you're going to have a few different materials here and you'll see familiar names like Diffuse, Normal and Roughness. There's a displacement here um, and I've made videos on in the past, but we won't get into what that is today. Uh, so what we're really looking at is these three. There's no metalness, and now if this were a metal material, we would have a metalness map, which looks a lot like the roughness map. It's a black and white values. Um, but again, we won't need that today because this is a wood material. So you don't have a metalness map unless you're creating a metallic material. So this is what they look like. The diffuse is not just color information. Diffuse is literally only color information we don't have shadow in here we don't have light values you can see how it looks very diffused right hence the name it's the light is very very plain and simple there's no shading um we literally just have some very very nice color information right from the wood grain to these little bits on these uh these bolts here the roughness as well as we talked about in the past is just information that is uh, black and white values between zero and one to determine how rough or how shiny 
a surface is so this being wood it's not particularly shiny uh it's not got any sort of varnish on it it's quite old wood like something you'd find on a park bench so this is mostly white we've got grays in here too um but this is mostly white so it's going to be quite a rough surface not very reflective and then lastly, we have the normal map as well, which is, if you haven't seen one of these before, it looks like a crazy sort of kaleidoscope of colors. Um, these work a little bit differently. They essentially, as we talked about in the past, they use tricks of light to create uh, surface detail and bumpiness, right? Like you see here in this wood, like this crack, um, where there is none. Without actually modifying the model, it creates the illusion of surface detail. So this is your normal map, and it will generally look like this. So how do we go about plugging all this in? Well, select your model for me, my cube. We're going to hold down right click, go to assign new material, come to Arnold, and then we're going to take the open PBR surface. You can use the standard surface as well as you want. That's an older uh, Arnold material. Um, works exactly the same way, apart from a few minor differences. All the maps go into the same place. Um, so feel free to use that too, but we're going to use an open PBR surface. Okay, so once we have that plugged in, we're going to go ahead and press our little blue ball up here to open up the hypershade editor and we're going to select our new material from the list and we're going to press this button here just to graph it so that we can see it always good practice i think just to rename these so i'm just going to call this uh wood material just so we know what this is in the list so like we've gone through before we have all our inputs the base color which is where our diffuse will go um the specular roughness, which is where you might have guessed our roughness will go, and the normal camera, which is where our normal map will go. So once you get used to this, you can very, very quickly uh, figure out where things are supposed to go. Um, and it's kind of like a bit like Lego, really. You're just plugging things in where they're supposed to go, right? Like the square hole, or the square goes in the square hole. <laughs> it's, it's just essentially a more complicated version of that, and you'll get used to it over time, even if it looks complicated now. So don't worry about it. So we're gonna go ahead and press tab. And we're going to create a file node, but specifically we want the file texture node. Okay, press enter and we'll create that. And then we'll just click on that. And on the right hand side, we've got an image name with a little folder here in a space. We're going to click that folder. That's then going to open up a file browser. I'm just going to copy the file path that I have here for my texture material. Texture material for the textures that I've downloaded. I would recommend storing that somewhere where it makes sense and you can remember where it is. Um, and because it's the, the diffuse, we want to take the diffuse material. You can see that represented here as well in the preview. And we're just going to hit open. Now, to get this into our material, we're just going to take the out color, hold down left click on this green circle, and then plug that into the base color. Okay. And just like that, our material now has color to it. If I were to enable the textured view, you can see we have wood on our cube, right? And it's as simple as that. Um, we have a few more maps to plug in though before we're done. So let's go back to the Hypershade Editor and we're gonna create another file node again, okay? And in fact, we're gonna create another file node. So we'll create two in total because you have three maps, okay? So if every time you wanna plug a file node into here, you need to create a file node. Or every time you want to plug an image texture in here, you need to create a file node. So we'll use this one here as our roughness. So we'll press the little file icon again. We'll go back to where we keep our material. And we're going to click on the roughness this time. We're going to click open. Okay. And you might try and drag the out color like we did with the diffuse into the specular roughness, but it doesn't actually work. And we've gone over this in previous videos. Uh, but what you want to take is either the out alpha that will plug in. Okay or you can take just one of the out color channels, be it red, green, or blue. I normally like to take the red, but you can take the alpha too, okay? One last little thing we need to do when we're plugging in roughness is you need to change the color space from sRGB, go to utility, and then click raw. If you don't do this, the roughness map will not function as intended. It needs to be in a raw color space, okay? The reason for that is because realistically, even though there is color here in the form of black and white, we're not actually looking for color information. We're just looking for specific like single channel grayscale values uh, that shouldn't be corrected in any way with any sort of color space. We can get into what a color space is in, an, in another video, but for the sake of this, just set this to raw um, and also turn on alpha is luminance. That's essentially just going to tell Maya and Arnold that the white parts of this map are the parts we want to be rough and the black parts are the parts we don't want to be rough um, to put it as simple as possible uh, finally the last file node we're going to go ahead and click file again paste our link to where we keep the texture files and we're going to take the normal this time 
and we're going to set the color space to raw again because this again is just not going to be used as a color information we just want the data from this texture map to drive the uh, bumpiness we could just plug the color into the normal camera but alone that will not actually do anything i'm afraid you need to create a separate node to go in between kind of like a middleman if you like so we're going to press tab and just type in normal and we're going to take the ai normal map okay and we're going to take the out color and plug that into the input and then the out value and plug that into the normal camera so at least in Maya and Arnold and I think most 3D applications as well whenever you're plugging in a normal map into a material like this you need to have a normal map node it might be called something else in, in other software like bump and so on um, but in this case we want to use the AI normal map node so if I just minimize this this doesn't really look any different that's because we're just looking at it in the viewport but all our materials are now connected if we were to open up uh, the material in the attribute editor you can see under color this uh little checkerboard here which we could have clicked to connect something is now this arrow which means that our materials are connected um, same for roughness as well you can see this value here of zero we can no longer adjust this has been well not grayed out but it's turned yellow which means we can't affect it anymore because it's got a texture file plugged in um, the same with geometry as well you can see under bump mapping we have our normal map node which if we were to click this arrow it would then take us to the file and then we can see our normal map so how can we go ahead and see what this all looks like well we'll just do a quick render I'll just chuck a standard light in the scene we'll use a directional light from the rendering tab here maybe just change the angle a little bit and increase the uh, exposure slightly just so that we can see what this is doing so now let's go ahead and come up to here where it says render and change this to Arnold instead of viewport 2.0 mine started rendering straight away if you're using new materials it may take a second and say it's generating te TX uh, texture files up here don't worry that's perfectly normal it can take longer depending on your system the resolution of the texture files where you have them saved that's normal it will do that for every time there's a new texture file but as you can see we now have everything plugged in and we're getting the bumpiness of the wood from the normal map right it looks like there's some depth to this it's not just flat and we're getting this roughness you know it has a subtle if we look at it from an angle a bit of a sheen to it um but it's a very very rough looking material now because it's wood and again you can really see the bumpiness from this angle here on this part of the the wood grain um so that realistically is how you set up basic pbr materials you just plug in those free maps and you can see it's very very easy to go in kind of like lego right it just pops together once you know what to use um, and like i said earlier if you were going to use a metal material that you downloaded from one of the sites i mentioned earlier you would just plug in the metalness into the base metalness you would um, set that to raw as well and alpha is luminance uh, but then these three work the exact same way regardless of whether it's any other type of material um, and yeah that's how you set up pbr materials in maya with arnold um if you went ahead and painted those yourself in substance or any other kind of uh, 3d painting software you would do it exactly the same way you just export your maps and then plug them back together again in the same way uh, i just showed you there in maya um and yeah so i hope that was helpful just a quick simple tutorial today uh if you have any suggestions for future videos please do let me know i always love to hear those um, if you have any questions as well or if it's not working for whatever reason please let me know too um, and yeah thank you very much for watching like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye.